Okay, we're back for another lesson. This is lesson three. Let's bring up Xcode. Um, oh. Yeah. Still says lesson one there, but um, okay. We're going to look at flow control now, and this entire video is going to going to be about the while statement. Um, statements normally execute sequentially. Flow of control statements allow for more than one complicated execution path. While statements is an example, um, it repeatedly executes a section of code so long as a given condition is true. We can use um, a while to write a program to sum the integers from 50 to 100 inclusively. That just means 50, 51, 52, right up to 100, all summed together or added. Um, and we'll actually code that up now using the while statement just to show you how it works. Um, I'll start by deleting these comments because they're not needed. Um, all this can go. Right, let's see, um, int sum, oh, we want to use a namespace std, I'll show you that in a second, int sum equals zero and val equals 50, um, while, oh, we had a, we had the condition there. Oops, I want I want to see how that works. While all right, while val is less than or equal to one hundred. Sum plus equals val and plus plus val. And then here, C out. Sum of 50 to 100 inclusive is left, left, sum, left, left, STD. Oh, we don't need that. End L. But this time, this won't build because um, we. We're not putting std at the start, so command B, build failed. But from now on, we're probably going to be using this thing here, using namespace std. And that'll take away this error in a second, see that? So now it, it built succeeded, and then we can run it. Um, it's eight. Uh, sorry, three three thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. Just going back to my notes. Um, so we've already said uh, that this will print the sum of fifty to a hundred inclusive is three thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. We we define two variables: sum, which will hold our summation, and val. Um, that's these two here. Uh, val, which will represent each of the values from a 50 through to 100. Um, we also initialize sum and val. So you can see here, with, with the, these values are assigned to, to, to val and sum to, when they're uh, defined to give them a value before we even start using them in this while loop here. Um, for, a, for a while, there is a condition in parens and a statement inside a block of code. So um, the parens that that refers to are these here. The condition goes in there and the um, um, 
So, um, let me see. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, yeah, Th these are the statements inside a block of code. Um, the while will execute by testing the condition and executing the associated statement until the condition is false. So while this uh, condition here remains true, then the statements inside the body of the while loop will continue to execute. Um, and a condition is an expression that yields a result that is either true or false. So you can see here, it says, um, whoops. That's just an alarm. It says val is less than or equal to 100. On the first time round, val equals 50. So 50 is less than or equal to 100. So it does, it performs this logic inside. Um, and the, even the next time round, when val equals 51, that's still less than 100, less than or equal to 100. So it executes it again. It does that over and over even right up to 100, when, when val is 100, is 100 less than or equal to 100? Still yes. Um, so it executes again. But the next time round, when val is 101, 101 is not less than or equal to 100. It's more than 100. So that's when it becomes false. And the program counter moves down to this line here and performs this bit of logic. Um, after executing the statement the condition is tested again so that's just what I was saying before it's tested over and over again this condition here the while continues alternately testing the condition and executing the, the, the statement until the condition is false the while here uses the less than or equal to operator to compare the current value and 100. As long as val is less than or equal to 100, the condition is true. If the condition is true, we execute the body of the while, which is what I was saying before. The body here has two statements. So that's these two here. Um, A block is a sequence of zero or more statements enclosed by curly braces. And these are the curly braces here. You've got an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. First statement in this block um, uses the command assignment operator. That's the plus equals these two. Um, the operator adds its right hand operand to its left hand operand and stores the result in the left hand operand. So it adds val inside memory to sum and then whatever sum plus val is, it then assigns to whatever's in val, uh, sorry, sum. So sum becomes the result of sum plus val and that's what this plus equals operator does. It's essentially addition and assignment. That's what it does. Addition first, then assignment. Um, the next statement, plus plus val, that's this one here, um, uses the prefix increment operator. That's the plus plus, these two. Um, the increment operator adds one to its operand. So the, the operand is val, and the operator is plus plus. So the plus plus um, operator adds one to the operand, adds one to val. So each time through the loop, val's getting bigger and bigger. And what you're doing is you, you're adding uh, what's already in sum to, to val and storing it back in sum. So effectively, it's like adding 50 
plus 51, plus 52, plus 53, plus 54, right up to plus 100. And then down here, saying the sum of 50 to 100 inclusive is the net result of that, which down here it reports as 3,825. Um... <sighs> After doing this, uh, the while loop evaluates the condition again. If the now incremented value of val is still less than or equal to 100, then the body of the while is executed again. The loop continues testing the condition and executing the body until val is no longer less than or equal to 100. Once val is greater than 100, the program falls out of the loop and continues execution with the statement following the while. In this case, the statement prints our output, which is this here. And this is our output. Then hangs waiting for input so that we can read it. Oh, that's just to do with uh, Visual Studio. We don't need to do that here, but um, anyway. Uh, so, I'm just going to pull up some more code now um, and we'll, we'll show a bit more into uh, how the while loop works um, in a sec. So we're now going to code something up to print the numbers 10 down to 0. Um, Same stuff using namespace std. Um, but this time we're going to start with val being initialized to 10. And we're going to use a while loop again, but this time we want it to be more than or equal to 0. And see out val and l. Whoops, and l. Um, but this time we're using the decrement operator. Can you guess what this is going to do? Um, we could do with um, st uh, and l here as well. So let's run that. You're just going to get 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh, um, nimpus std um, and l. What does it say? Reference to all the do you mean to call did you mean to call it um put that instead CD and L. In fact, C out and L should work like that. There we go. That's, there you got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. <laughs> right. Um, This time we're using the decrement operator to subtract 1 from val. So remember me saying about this before? That's the decrement operator. Val has a value, whatever it is, let's say it's 8. You then get to this line of code here, it decrements 1 from val, making it 7. It decrements 1 from what's at whatever's in val, so 8 minus 1 is 7, and then it, it 
assigns seven to Val. And then the next time around, Val's printed first, so seven's then printed. And then this gets decremented to six. And then six is printed, five, four, three, two, one, and that's how you get the effect of a countdown. Once value reaches zero, the program fails, sorry, falls out of the while loop and continues execution. So when, when we get, uh, when um, val is equal to one and it's decremented by one, so zero is assigned, actually, that's a bad example. When, uh, when val is zero and one is subtractive, you get negative one or minus one. So th when, when the while loop executes again, minus one is minus one more than or equal to zero. The answer to that is false. So you fall out of the body of the while loop and you come down here uh, to continue execution and that's when the program exits. Um, and let's, let's take a look at a bit more code. Um, just to, to finally show off um, the while loop. Um, this is a bit more complicated. Um, okay, uh, let's see what, what we've got here. And now we're going to write a program that asks for a user for two numbers. The first low and the second high, it will open, it will imprint the sum of the numbers in that range. So let's type that up. We can delete all this. Um, int val one equals zero. Val two equals zero, and sum equals zero. C out. Enter a uh, low. Low number. Um, we want to put whatever's read from the input interval one, then C out, enter a high number. In fact, we're better off putting a colon here like this. And then C in val2. C out sum of Val one to Val two is and then we need to do the logic to work out the sum. So while Val one is less than or equal to and I'm going to explain all this in a second. Val oh, two sum plus equals val oh, one plus plus val oh, one and down here C out C out sum and we might as well have an end L there as well. And th this is going to work. So enter a low number. We'll go with 10. Enter a high number, 42. 
the elusive 42. Sum of 10 to 42 is 858. And if you do that on a calculator or express it out and um, do the whole sum, you'll see that that's true. But let's run it again for um, a, an easier one. We'll do the numbers 1 through to 4. And that's 10 because 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 4. Uh, sorry, plus 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10. That's 10 there. So it does work. Um, this. So let's explain the code. This time the value in sum is being added to the value in val1 and re reassigned to sum. So... Whatever's in val is being added to sum. So let's say on the first time around, let's use one to four as an example. Uh, val val one starts off um, at one, um, and so one is being added to sum. Sum starts at zero, so sum is now one. Um, and the next time around, val1 increments by 1 because of the uh, increment operator. So val1 becomes 2 and this time sum is 1 and val1 is 2. So sum and val1 is 1 plus 2 which is 3. And 3 gets put into sum. So that's the first two numbers, 1 and 2. 1 added to 2 is 3, and 3 is stored in sum. And you keep going like that until um, val1 is more than 4. Because val2 was 4. So if val1 becomes 5, that's more than 4. So this doesn't execute, and that's where this gets printed. So just to reiterate over that, um, it, again, this bit here is just the uh, addition and assignment. When the condition reaches the point where val1 is no longer less than or equal to val2, we exit the loop. Then the result of the calculation is printed to the screen. Notice how plus plus val is used so that the next value stored in val1 is one bigger than its previous iteration of the while loop through the while loop. Eventually, plus plus val takes val1 above val2 and the condition returns false. When the condition returns false, we exit and print the answer here. Uh, right. That's uh, the Lesson 3 completed, I'll see you in the next lesson.